Okay, so in this video, I'm going to give two solutions. Uh, the first solution is the way that I did it. Uh, the second solution is another way that I developed afterward because I was under the impression, and maybe you guys can correct me, guys and gals, I mean guys as the universal. Um, maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong. I thought that there was supposed to be no trig required to do well on the AMC 10, to do the AMC 10. That a trig is a requirement for AMC 12, but not the AMC 10. Yet, now that we know that, but at the same time, I think this test is a perfect example of if you do know trig, you can have a serious advantage on some problems because it could give you a solution where you wouldn't know one otherwise, or it could give you the more efficient solution, which I think is what happens in number 18. Uh, the easiest, least mentally taxing method on 18, I felt could be done with trig, but there's probably other ways that don't need it as well. So first, I'm gonna use the trig method to explain this. So distinct lines L and M lie in the XY plane. They intersect at the origin. I think we had something like that happen in the A test. Point P, negative one, four, is reflected about line L to point P prime. Okay, um, let's kind of draw what's going on here. We've got the first quadrant, second quadrant, all right, whatever. Negative one, one, two, three, four, you got a point about right here. Uh, it says then what? Where's L though? Uh, let's keep reading. About line L to a point P prime, and then P prime is reflected about line M to a point P double prime. The equation of line L is Y equals five X. That's the way that I would read that. Um, again, I try to change what I read into a form I would like to see it in. So this is line L. And what next? And the coordinates of P double prime are four, one. Now, let's say, I mean, this is what we're gonna end up at right here, okay? So first off, where are you gonna end the first point? About right here or so. That means the second equation that you're gonna be folding over is about like this, so that you can hit it perpendicular like that because the line of reflection, the line that connects the two points after the reflection, this being P prime and this being P double prime four comma one, that will be perpendicular to this second line M and that's what we're looking for. What is the equation of line M? Again, any line through the origin and a point X sub naught Y sub naught has slope with the Y coordinate over the X coordinate. So if say you could find that point of intersection right there, then you would be able to get it. And that is the second way that I do this problem. But first I will do the trig way. One thing you might not know, and you can add it to your small notebook, um, actually this is negative one four. The rotation about the origin by 90 degrees is if you have a 90 degree clockwise rotation, clock, can I spell? Wise. If your hand's like moving, but you're like, that's not what I want you to do, hand. And it doesn't look like what you were trying to write. All right, so X, Y is going to become, and it's just going to go like this. You're gonna switch the Y to the X place, and then over here, it's the negative version of, so they switch spots, but the X becomes the negative version of itself. So negative one becomes one, and the four just becomes still four, but in the X coordinates position. This indicates that's a 90 degree rotation. Now, how could you get it if you didn't know this? You should always be thinking about alternative ways to establish pieces of information that you need. Well, one way you could get it is if you connected this line to the origin, its slope would be four over negative one or negative four. And if you collect connected P double prime to the origin, its slope would be one fourth. And those are negative reciprocals indicating 90 degrees, indicating those two connected to here would be perpendicular. Okay, so I'm gonna connect those here like this so we can look at it. Now, the other thing is, if I connect P prime to here, then basically what line L is, is the altitude of this triangle. And this angle could be called theta, and this angle could be called theta, and over here, same thing. This could be called alpha, and this could be called alpha. 
can't draw alpha sideways very, I can't draw it very well at all. Anyway, but these are both alpha, these are both theta. Now think about it, you've got two theta plus two alpha equals 90. Well, what does that mean about theta plus alpha? It means it's 45 degrees, and that is the angle in between L and M. This is 45 degrees. And so since that's 45 degrees, well, this gives me some ideas. Maybe what I could do then is erase this and make this into a different calculation. I guess we'll call it, um, uh, well, let's call this up here, this triangle. I'm going to call this angle beta. Okay. Now, what is the tangent of beta? Well, no, 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 hold on. We don't want to do that. If this is 45, yeah, then this will be like 45 minus beta. Okay, so tangent of beta is going to be opposite over adjacent. Okay, you guys should, even if you're AMC 10 student, you should know SOHCAHTOA and the basics of it at least. So opposite over adjacent is opposite is one and adjacent is four because that lines, and I'm sorry, five, one over five. So we're saying that tangent of beta is equal to one over five. Now I know that this angle down here between line M, okay, and uh, the, the X axis, right? That angle is going to be uh, 45 minus beta. If you don't see what's happening, let's look inside of it real quick. You've got two lines like this that make 45 degrees. I'm calling this beta and this 45 minus beta. So when I add this one to this one to this one, all three make 90, and we know the first quadrant is 90. So what was the this theta plus alpha thing for? That was just to establish that the angle between the two lines was 45 degrees. By the way, there are some formulas about um, reflecting over a double reflection like that when you know this angle and I forget the exact formula again I'm not gonna have equipped on the test every single concept that you possibly could need so you're gonna have to make do with the concepts you do know and the more you know the greater the chance you're gonna be able to do it I never claim that all of my solutions are the most efficient I just claim they're what I did when I solved the problem so over here now, if I could just find, you might not know it, but anytime you have a horizontal and you have a line theta, okay, if I call this line L for instance, then the slope of line L is equal to tangent of theta. You can add that to your small notebook as well. And again, why is that? It's because this is the rise and this is the run. Makes sense, right? So now we've got tangent of 45 minus beta and so I know I'm gonna be able to make that into an identity using the difference formula for tangent so tangent of 45 minus beta and I'm not gonna go through how I memorize the sum and difference formulas right now in the future I will make a video where I try to derive all of them or at least establish how I have them all connected in my mind and maybe it will help you you might want to watch the speed trig video for a basic primer for that one when it comes up so uh, tangent of 45 minus tangent of beta over 1 plus tan 45 tan beta. That's what this will equal. Well, then the thing is, tangent of 45 is 1. So this becomes 1 minus, and we know what tangent of beta is. We found it. It's 1 over 5. So it's 1 fifth. And the denominator is 1 plus 1 times 1 fifth. That's four fifths over six fifths. Four fifths over six fifths is two thirds. If I can write a five, it's hard to write from this angle. All right, so the fives cancel. Four over six is two thirds. Why does that matter? Because that is the value of this, right? This angle, the tangent of this angle is two thirds. That's the slope of line M. And since line M goes to the origin, that's all you need to know. It's gonna be Y equals two thirds X, the slope of the line. All I have to do now is multiply by three Y 
and I'm gonna see what that looks like. 3y equals 2x. These are all in standard form where the x is positive, so I move the 3y over, and you get 2x minus 3y is equal to zero. Let me check the time. I gotta teach in seven minutes. Let's see if we can do the other way. Um, so I'm gonna erase this. Yeah, it's gonna be that answer for that reason. Again, even if you don't know that clockwise rotation, you could prove the lines are perpendicular. You don't have to know every concept as long as you have other skills that you can use to figure out what you wanna know. So then uh, the other way that you could do it is the following. You knew the equation of line L, right? I'm gonna call the equation of line L perpendicular, the one that goes through P perpendicular to L to get to P prime. So this would be like P, P prime line, okay? Um, then what is the slope of line L perpendicular? That's going to be the negative reciprocal of this. Since this is a slope of five, then this would be uh, negative one fifth. And I would have y equals negative one-fifth x plus b and I could plug in this point into here to find b. So plugging in negative one I'm going to get one-fifth and this is four and this is b times five is twenty equals one plus five b subtract one b is equal to the not very pleasant nineteen over five. All right, so once you've established that, you can write the equation of line L perpendicular, which is y equals negative one-fifth x plus 19 fifths. Now, what do I wanna know? I wanna know where it intersects line L. Why? Because then I can balance on that point to get to where P prime is. So I'm gonna set negative one-fifth x plus 19 fifths equal to the equation of line L, which is simply 5x. So I'm going to multiply by 5, negative x plus 19 equals 25x, add to get 26x equals 19, divide by 26, and you're going to get 19 over 26. Great, well, that's this point right here, by the way. What's the y-coordinate? Well, you've got the equation of that. It's 5x, so literally multiply that by 5, you're going to get five times 19 is 95 over 26. Okay, all right, and so I had a little technical glitch there. Uh, this point right here is actually this point right here because you just found where the L perpendicular line intersected line L. And because it has to be symmetric about that line, you can just kind of treat it like a midpoint. So for example, from negative one, how far do I have to go to get to here, my x coordinate? Well, I would travel one and then 19 over 26 more. So I would go to a, an adding plus uh, 26 and 19 is 45 over 26. In other words, if I started at negative one and I added that, I would end up here. Then I'm gonna do that again to get to the point P prime. So the point P prime would be 45 plus 19, 50, 64 over 26. I'm just gonna leave it like that. And um, after that, how far did I go from four to get to 95 over 26? Okay, and so then another technical glitch. I don't wanna get into it. Like a dog started barking, going crazy. So uh, 64 over 26. Now, how am I gonna get the Y coordinate? You're going from four, convert four to something over 26. That is, it's going to be 104 over 26. How far is it from 104 to 95? You go down 9. So you're going to go down 9 again, because this is going to be the midpoint of these two points. Right, so I go down 9, you'll be at 86 over 26. 80, let's see, 86 over 26. All right, now, you've located P prime, you know that P double prime is here. What you need is the midpoint of these two points. And so you're gonna take four one, and four is, I'm gonna convert it to something over 26. Actually, these both reduce, don't they? So I can divide by two and make it 32 over 13, and divide by two here to get 43 over 13. Okay, then 
Let's convert this to something over 13. I'll make it 52 over 13. And then 13 over 13, like so. Then if I add 52 and 32, I get 84 over 13. Okay. Uh, 84 over 13. And you want the midpoint of that. So you're going to cut it in half to get 42 over 13, comma. And then the other one's going to be 43 over 13 plus 13 over 13 is 56 over 13, which you're going to cut in half to get 28 over 13. Now, all I want to do is make a ratio with that. So you're going to get the Y coordinate of 28. I mean, you can see this is painful, right? This is why you want to learn the trig stuff to save these kinds of calculations. 28 over 13 over 42 over 13. The 13s cancel. 28 over 42 is 2 thirds. That is your slope. Again, if you go through the origin, any point will have the slope of the y coordinate over the x coordinate. By finding the midpoint of these two points, we found the point on line m, which is all we need. This is the slope. You get y equals 2 thirds x. And that's going to be the exact same thing we had before over here, generating the exact same answer of 2x minus 3y equals 0. But seriously, not enjoyable, not an enjoyable process. The trig was much cleaner, much faster. Learn trig if you're doing AMC 10. It will save you time. And that's it for this problem.